In this video, we will do an example involving counting the number of starting lineups for a basketball team. So the example says, a basketball team plays five players at one time. Their positions are point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and center. If the team has four new members and eight returning members, how many different starting lineups have more returners than new members if all of them can play any position? So definitely take a minute or two to pause the video and copy this problem down. So let's go ahead and start to talk about it together. So there are five positions. So I'm going to put five slots. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to call point guard PG, shooting guard SG, small forward is SF, power forward PF, and center C. And I want to mention that when the question is asking for these different starting lineups, a starting lineup is who starts the game. Because over the course of a basketball game, different players might be in the game, but a starting lineup is about who, which of the players get to begin playing the game, which of the five players get to begin. So because the question says, how many different starting lineups are there that have more returners than new members? There are a few different ways that could happen. Like you could have all returners and zero new members, but you could also have something like three returners and two, two new members. So what this suggests is that we consider some cases in our problem. So we are actually going to have three cases here. So the first case is, uh, the fewest number of returners I could have is three. We could have three returners and two new members. We could also have four returners and one new member. And we could also have five returners and zero new members. Those are all the cases where we have more returners than new people. If we had less than three returners, we would have more new people than we have returners, and we don't want that. So these cases are what I'll call disjoint. And by disjoint, I mean they can't happen at the same time. So if I'm in case one, and there's three returners and two new people who are gonna start the game, I can't also be in case five at the sorry case three at the same time where five returners and zero new people have started the game. And as we've seen before, when we have these disjoint cases, we will, after we work out how many different lineups are in each case, we will add at the end of the problem. Okay, so let's look at these case by case. So let's look at case one first, where we have three returners and two new members. And let's think about our strategy here. So for strategy, so for this question, if I were to sort of think about these sort of slot by slot and think about how many choices I have for each one, we run into an obstacle pretty quickly. Like for example, I don't know whether a returner or a new person is gonna go into this first slot because the question says, all of the players can play any position. So for example, if I picked one of the returners to go into this slot, well now I still need two returners and two new people to occupy the remaining spots and I don't know who's gonna go where, so that can happen in a bunch of different ways. And I would still need to go back and consider, well, what if I put a new person in the point guard slot? Because if I did that, there's one new person left to place and three returners to place. And there's a bunch of different ways I can do that. And then moreover, I have to then think about, well, which of those new people is gonna go in and which of those returners is gonna go into those three spots. And it just, we get into a lot of cases. So I don't want to think about this sort of position by position. Instead of 
that, I want to think about this a little bit more holistically. So for my strategy, let's first, because I know I have three returners and two new people, let's count first the number of ways that we can choose three returners from our group and two new players from our group of new players to be in this set of three returners and two new players who's going to be playing. Okay, and then after that, because the question says, well, all of them can play any position, we will count the number of ways to pick their positions. After we have our, our five starters picked out, then we just got to decide their positions. Okay, so when we do this first thing, count the number of ways to choose three returners and two new players, the order in which we pick them doesn't matter. And that suggests that we are going to use combinations. In fact, the problem says, well, we want to pick three returners. And in total, we have eight returning members. So there are going to be eight choose three ways to pick the three returners from the group of eight returners that we have. And we use combinations here because the order in which we pick the set of three returners does not matter. Similarly, we got to pick two new players out of four total new players. So there's four choose two ways to pick the two new players. So once we have our five players chosen, we must decide their positions. So let's do that next. So now let's draw slots for each position. So one, two, three, four, five. And at this point, once we have our set of five players chosen, that consists of the three returners and two new members, all of them can play any position. So first, let's think about point guard. I'm going to say point guard is this first spot. And there's going to be five ways to choose the point guard once we have our set of five members picked. So I'm going to put a five there. And after we pick that first person to play point guard, there's four ways to choose the shooting guard. I'll call them SG. Because it could be anyone except the point guard, which I'll call PG. So let's write a four there. And once I've picked the point guard and the shooting guard, now there's three ways to choose the small forward, which I'll call SF, because it could be anyone except who we've picked for point guard, PG, and shooting guard, SG. So we put a three there. And if we kept going like this, there would be two ways to pick uh, the power forward. And then for the center, there would be one person left because now we would have chosen each of the previous four positions. So we're going to multiply these values together, which gives us five factorial. And if I, I'll work that out a little bit later. Okay, so overall, thus, we get eight choose three times four choose two times whoops, this last one is just 5 factorial. And we're multiplying all these values together because these were all steps of the same process. So within this case of three returners and two new members, these were all steps in that same process. They were picking the three returners, picking the two new members after that, and then picking the ways you can decide their positions after that. All right, so if I evaluate this, 8 choose 3 is 8 times 7 times 6. 
So we have three numbers in this list, and I divide it by three factorial. This is one of our formulas for combinations. Remember, the other formula was it would be eight factorial over three factorial times uh, eight minus three factorial. Eight minus, and that'll simplify to what I have here. Similarly, four choose two is going to be four times three on top, and then divided by two factorial on the bottom. Okay, and then finally I got times five factorial. When I use this particular formula for combinations that I'm using, on the numerator, I need to make sure I have as many numbers multiplying each other as I have on the bottom in my combination. So for example, in eight choose three, the number three is written on the bottom. So in my product on the top here in the next line, I need to have three numbers multiplying each other to refer to the fact that I'm choosing three, three different uh, people or three different elements. So if we work this out with the calculator, we end up getting 40,320. So that's what we get from case one, this many lineups. Similarly, remember, we still have case two. Remember, case two was, what if we had four returners? and one new person and then case three was what if we had five returners and zero new people so these two cases are really similar to the one that we just did so with these i'm going to leave these for you to try they're also super similar to one of our homework questions but I will just tell you what you'll get after you work out both cases. So in case two, once you work this out, you'll get 33,600. And in case three, you'll end up getting 6,720. All right, so that means our final answer. Remember at the beginning, we said we need to add these values together. will be 40,320 plus 33,600 plus 6,720. And that gives us 80,640. So recall that we add because our cases are completely separate, or sometimes I'll say disjoint. You can't be in two of the cases at the same time. The conceptual reason for this, in terms of Venn diagrams, if I were to draw a circle for each of these cases, so I'd have one circle for our first case where we had three returners, I'll write three R, and two newbies, which I'll call two N. And then another circle for four returners, and one new person. And notice that my circles don't overlap at all. Because I can't be in both of these cases at the same time. And then we have one other final circle that's also not going to overlap with five returners and zero new people. So when we have two circles and they don't overlap, uh, we call them disjoint. They're called disjoint sets. But when we have more than two circles and they don't overlap, we call them pairwise disjoint set. Okay, so on a conceptual level, what we are counting is the number of elements in the union of these circles. So I'm going to call this one A, this one B, and this one C. Because we could either be in case one or in case two or in case three, that's why it's a union. But this equals the number of elements in a union like this will just equal the number of elements in the first case plus the number of elements in the second set plus the number of elements in the third set. We've seen this before. When our sets, A, B, and C, are pairwise disjoint as they are in this question. So in a later video in this section, we'll look at how we can do counting problems like this when we're trying to find the number of elements in a union of two sets.
but our sets are not disjoint. So in terms of our goals for this section, I'm actually jumping around out of order a little bit. We have finished the first part of goal number three, which is counting the number of elements in a union, one case or another case, when our sets are disjoint. In this case, they were pairwise disjoint because there were more than two of them.